we do not need to eliminate uh, left recursion, nor do we need to pre-process the grammar in any way if we're using Bison or another top-down parser, for instance, um, Antelar. Um, so you re might remember this grammar from uh, lesson two. Um, that is that an x uh, is an x plus a term and the x minus term and so on. And um, we rewrote this grammar into um, a version that didn't contain left recursion last time. Uh, but now let's see if we can use this grammar and to get with Bison, write a specification, um, a specification and um, basically do the same exercise, um, which I showed in Julia in the, the complementary videos without uh, doing anything more. So let's go ahead and do it. Stop. <laughs> uh, thank you. So uh, I was speaking about um, um, uh, an exercise we're going to show you. Did I get this far at least say about that? Yes, so this is our initial grammar. It's the same grammar which we eliminated left recursion from in lab number two. And um, we'll start by showing you the C declarations, which you can see here. And uh, the C declarations, we have simply included STD.io, which is the standard IO library for C. Uh, we include C type.h, and that is for the is digit function. Uh, I also add um, just a declaration of YYLX here to kill a warning. And since C doesn't have Booleans, I have to define through myself, or I don't have to, but it makes the code a bit more readable. And um, this is followed by YY error. And this is just a simple dumb implementation, but at least we need to have this. So I provide my own. And this is followed by the Bison declarations. In this file, we don't have this many Bison declarations. We used to have one. Uh, we have digit. And uh, this is followed by this A here, which calls YY abort. So I have basically two different rules to start up with. And this first rule here, that is if we have an expression followed by a new line, I call uh, printf. I add this to make it look nice and do percent um, D followed by a new line and then take dollar one. Dollar one here being expert. So dollar one corresponds directly to this part. And then I call this macro YY accept, which means that we should accept this um, this production. And this is our semantic action. So if we encounter expert and a new line, we execute this semantic action. And um, yeah, if we have an A, we call YY abort, so we abort the parsing. Um, and this time, this time I'm a bit, um, I'm cheating a bit, so I am using uh, the main function is um, written here. So I don't have a separate file, I just write everything in the same file. So the main function is just as any other auxiliary C function. Oops, it is. So while true, we parse, return the result. As long as the result is um, uh, not zero, we return the result. And the result will be zero for every successful parse. But if the parse wouldn't be successful, yeah, then we would return res, which is typically one. This is our lexer, and this is a very simple lexer. If you looked at the Zainab slides, you might have seen this particular lexer before. So we basically only read a char using get char. We check if said char is a digit. That is why we include stdio.h. And if it is a digit, we take uh, we do this classic C conversion. That is that we subtract the ASCII value of uh, this zero with C to get uh, the integer value of C, put it in YY while, and then we return digit. Otherwise, uh, we simply return zero if we have an S. But since I rewrote this, um, I don't need this. That's, this is not needed. Otherwise, let's just return whatever character we have. That character, for instance, might be um, a new line or it might be this A, which you can see here. 
And if we now start by implementing these different rules, um, let's see here. We can start with expert. So if we do expert, that is expert. And an expert is an expert plus a term. And the semantic action for this would be a term, of course, being a character. So we find this out from the look ahead. And let's see. Yes, and then we should just do a simple semantic action here. The semantic action, that should be uh, expert plus term, which should be written as dollar one or other dollar dollar is equal to dollar one plus dollar two, I'm not mistaken. And then we should do the same rule for minus, sorry, no, this should be dollar three. Dollar three is the term we have over here, dollar one being the expert. Mm, let's see if I remember this. Then yeah, of course a semicolon. So we have over here and then we should have a new line and then we can add if sun which is an expert minus term and that would be dollar dollar which would be equal to dollar one plus dollar three like this and the term is written that way, so let's just make some spaces here. And we can continue. I think we should have an empty case. No, also dollar, of course, also being equal to term. So I missed something up here. I should also have a term. update the slides for that. So we should also be able to go to a term. And that would be, let's see. In the term that would go to, that would be dollar dollar equals dollar one, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Dollar dollar equal to dollar one. Let's do it like this. Then we should have a semicolon. Semicolon terminates the set of rules, in this case for expert. Sometimes you, and then we get the term and term should simply be written as term times. And of course I need to remember to have this here term times factor and then you simply write you can see here that this is much nicer than having to rewrite the grammar and let's see this would be equal to dollar one times dollar three so we so like before we are computing as we run we should have a semicolon here and now we should have term and term goes to term divided by the factor, which is dollar dollar, which is equal to dollar one divided by dollar three, semicolon. And then the term should go directly to num. So no, I did a mistake here. This should be a colon course and this should be like this and then we should go here that goes directly to num <laughs> knowing that emacs is not really set here so i have to change the indention dollar uh, one semicolon <laughs> then we should have um, Let's see, let's see. Uh, yes, of course, factor is that straightforward. 
Uh, so it should be, it should be, um, bum, bum. And that should go to, uh, that should be equal dollar two, given that we get this and then we can, I forgot to finish the rule up here. So I do it like this. And then for factor, we have one additional rule and that is that we go to, it should be a colon here. And that is that we go to, let's see, to num. And if that's the case, then dollar dollar is equal to dollar one. Oh, sorry, no, yeah, this should be the case. And then we have the last rule for num. And num is simply, uh, digit we have our digit and if we have a digit yeah then we just do this basic semantic action so we do dollar dollar ah oh, dollar dollar is equal to dollar one and now i need to re-add those semicolons which i missed here in a couple of lines mm, this should be dollar two we should have digit and uh, we can end factor as well, which we do here. Let's go. So I think this looks quite all right. Let's see if I can compile it. So I wrote this uh, yesterday as well, just to prepare and I can see if I got the right program. It looks like it at least. Term, next term, number factor. Yeah. <laughs> Then you can invoke um, Bison. We can actually be as fun to actually do this directly in Emacs. So we can use the Emacs shell. So what you can do is that you can simply execute Bison dot um, by, sorry, <laughs> bison, then execute calculator.y. This will generate a calculator.tab.c file, and this file contains the code generated by bison. So bison generates uh, C code, and it um, looks like this. It is completely unreadable. That is why top-down parsers, we usually say that they are nice for computers. They are not so nice for people but they're easy to generate. But if we now run our calculator, you can simply use GCC and then compile calculator.tab.c. We get an a.out file. So maybe I should uh, compile this to another file that's O. And then you can do dot slash calculator. If you do this, since it's one plus one, that's two, four times Four, that is 16, nine times three, that is 27. Let's do uh, in parentheses four plus four times in parentheses um, nine plus nine. That should be eight times nine, that should be 72. Sorry, no, it should be, let's, yeah, let's do it like this. Yes, and then four divided by four, that is one. Uh, four minus four, yeah, and so on. 
So this looks quite all right. So you can see how simple it was to implement uh, the grammar that we had for lesson two uh, in, um, or, and also in lab two using Bison instead of bothering with the writing left recursion and so on. But in practice, uh, modern compiler to change uh, have actually stopped using uh, bottom-up parsers and parser generators. Sometimes they use it initially because it's easy to get started, but um, both GCC and uh, Ceiling now uses handwritten top-down parsers instead of using uh, uh, bottom-up parsers. Ceiling has never used a bottom-up parser, but uh, GCC used to use uh, Bison uh, in the front end. But now it also uses, um, uh, I have some issue with my throat, I'm sorry. Um, GCC also now uses um, um, a top-down parser. The reason is that one um, disadvantage of bottom-up parsers is that uh, you get um, the error messages are not always that great. But if you use a top-down parser, you can get much better error messages since you have a much better knowledge about the context when you parse um, top down, that is because you start at the top and then you go down to the bottom. But it's a um, quite simple explanation. So let's go back to lesson three and uh, from the current slide. So I'm gonna change um, change the grammar because I forgot to add um, the term which X goes to as well. And I forgot to add the factor which term goes to here. So I will update this part. And uh, as we discussed before, uh, writing uh, a Bison uh, calculator based on this grammar is uh, quite simple. You have the grammar here. You write your C declarations and you write your Bison declarations. And um, this time it was simple, of course, because we only have uh, one token that we expect, that's the digit. And then you simply write the grammar. And of course, we have we can supply a very simple lexer here as well. But one thing to remember here, which is a bit different, of course, is that I use um, a couple of built-in macros available in Flex to make the calculator nice. And that is yyaccept, which uh, says that, okay, uh, we are done with our parse now. Uh, let's just return. You will not use this in the lab. And the same with yyabort, which um, allows us to abort um, the parse early. So in this case, if you supply an A to the calculator, we will abort. And of course, I changed the grammar a bit from lesson two. So instead of having ident, which was no point in adding, I instead um, added num, which is simply uh, any sequence of numbers from one to nine. It should really be a zero here. I did the same mistake on my video with uh, the top down parser. This is for part number one. And uh, after the break, we're going to discuss the language, which we'll use in um, lab three. And then we'll speak a little bit about uh, intermediate code generation and uh, quadruples. So let's just have a quick break for 15 minutes and start again at uh, 9.15. See you then. Also, I might mention I recorded um, this video, so I will cut it and um, put it up on YouTube so you can revisit it. And it will not be the entire chain of slides, but rather the last part when I discuss um, the calculator and the different aspects of Bison. Yeah, thank you.